I am Dorothée Humbert. I had the privilege of being the chair of the jury for the inaugural Oberlander Prize. And so I will start as a very polite former young woman <laughs> by thanking everybody, starting with the Cultural Landscape Foundation. And this is where I would like a little bit of a drum roll because the first one to be thanked is Charles Birnbaum. <laughs> You should know that yesterday he announced that he had been married for six years. So that means that the seven years that he's been working on this prize is actually only seven weeks. Uh, so he did a great job. Um, so thanking the Cultural Landscape Foundation, everybody, Charles, uh, Nord, Karen, all the people who put this fantastic event together. Um, and then, of course, the nominators and the supporters of the Oberlander Prize. So these should also get an applause because it was an incredible number. And then last but not least, um, long, long friend and former colleague, a curator of the prize, John Beardsley. Uh, so the elephants in the room are the members of the jury who are not here, and in alphabetical order, I will mention them. Tatiana Bilbao, Michelle Devigne, Gina Ford, Teresa Galizard, Walter Hood, and Aki, Mo Aki Omi. So these were uh, an interesting bunch, uh, to say the least. <laughs> um, and th what was interesting about them, I think, is that they represented th the three main areas of landscape architecture, the profession, academia, and then cultural and disciplinary activism, in a sense, with the, with the Cultural Landscape Foundation. So it was a fabulous experience, even though we didn't meet in person. So in fact, there was, as everybody hears, you know, about, okay, the pandemic, it's a drag, but we have to be always on our screens and so forth. But there are some good things. Um, probably allowed us to be more thorough by meeting more often. Um, since we were on different coasts, different countries, uh, ranging from the East Coast to the West Coast, Mexico, France, and Japan occasionally. So, and also the reduction of some of our big personalities uh, to a postage stamp may also have level power, whether it was real or perceived. And all members were extremely generous with their time. The only drawback, as you can well imagine, was not being able to visit the projects. So uh, in case you are feeling very generous, it would be fantastic for the next jury to have sufficient money for everybody to travel to see the finalist projects. Just a hint. Um, so it was both a privilege and a responsibility. And this is you know, what happens when you have to deal with teenagers. You always tell them there's privilege and it comes with responsibility. So we looked at 200 dossiers from around the world, so again, fantastic job on the Cultural Landscape Foundation and the nominators. Um, and that was really talking about the breadth and the depth of landscape architecture. And uh, what was fantastic was to have a conversation with great people, and it was about sending a message to reward landscape architecture and bring attention to landscape architecture. Now on the side of the responsibility, was it was the inaugural prize named after Pioneer a woman with convictions. So it was also a collective wake-up wake up call of the, of, the, of the last year, which had led so many of us to re-examine how to design, how to educate, how to speak about the discipline and the profession. So the, pro the process was really about projecting a message, looking at built work while projecting forward, so in a sense looking at the past through the lens of the future, keeping an open mind and realizing that this was a moment in time. So the next jury will probably have a very different lens, but this is the one that we chose. So our brief was basically to look at work uh, that um, spoke of multiple dimensions, environmental, social, aesthetic, cultural, had a public impact, whether it was like public as in real or perceived impact, you know, the projection of an idea, um, and expand the definition of landscape architecture. So we deliberated, we argued, we coaxed. And in the end, we all agreed about the, imp the importance of sustained, engaged design. So it was really looking at design as advocacy and design as activism. 
And so the laureate, no drum roll yet, who's been in practice for 30 years as a designer, teacher, and thinker, really fit that bell. She is a designer to the core. She's determined. She's an agitator. She questions by acting and making. She has continuously demonstrated that landscape architecture is about place and systems. She has championed, to quote John Beersley, ecological imagination through thick and thin. So it's a sort of marriage of sorts. We're coming back to the marriage thing, Charles. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, from the regeneration of Superfund sites, rehabilitation of industrial landscapes, sustainable reuse, urban forestry, from Passaic, New Jersey, and Meadowlands, to Philadelphia and Detroit, she's an individualist collaborator. Last but not least, she's an educator through and through. Dedicated, demanding, and décalé. And I'm using that because I need an alliteration for the last third word, and so I'm using a French word which means slightly off, you know, not really <laughs> in the mainstream, just a little bit to the right or the left. Uh, slightly offset to, in fact, trigger a reaction, energize the discussion, and propose new alternatives. So I will end with Cornelia Oberlando's recommendation to Charles that the awardee be, and I quote, exceptionally talented creative, courageous, and visionary. That is 100% Julie Bargman. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs>